Hello, welcome to Masterpiece Theater. No, I'm not Russell Baker, or even Alistair Cook. But gee, wouldn't it be great to talk like they do? A masterpiece, a classic, whether it be in the arts, literature, or even television, is an accomplishment that has withstood the test of time. An achievement that draws acclaim from many. Tonight we are going to recognize just such an effort. Presenting the 1993 national champions, the St. Ignatius Wildcats, a gridiron masterpiece. Good morning, Mr. Kyle. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to lead your Wildcat team to a third straight state title and its fifth crown in six years. No team has done that since the state playoffs were expanded. You will face a schedule of some of the best teams in Northeast Ohio, as well as some very familiar playoff foes. Your team must be able to overcome some key injuries, a week's delay in the playoffs, and handle the pressure of being the top-ranked team in the country. Should you and your impossible Mission Ignatius team fail in your efforts, as always, the alumni will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This message will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Good luck, Chico. Join John Williams and the Boston Pops Orchestra for an evening at Pops. Like a world-class orchestra, an efficient football offense produces some beautiful music. A superb line, whether it was opening holes for the running game or protecting the passer, pounded out the beat as the Wildcats rhythm section. Led by all USA Today tackle, number 64, Eric Goldston, the big guys up front set the tempo that produced more than 500 points and nearly 5,000 yards of total offense. The receivers, the string section of our Wildcat Orchestra, created some sweet sounds in 93. Inexperienced at the start of the year, they soared to high notes by season's end. The Wildcat Orchestra's conductor was quarterback Scott Mutrin. A parade All-American, Scott had an outstanding year, completing 113 passes for more than 1,700 yards and 21 touchdowns. He ran for six scores and even caught a touchdown pass as he put his name alongside the very best at his position in St. Ignatius history. And guest conductor Sean Grady was terrific against Menor. The brass section often makes the biggest impact for an orchestra. So too was it for the Wildcat running backs. The featured artist was all-state tailback Eric Haddad. In his third year as a key performer, Eric had a record-smashing season. The Northeast Ohio Offensive Player of the Year set new school standards with 1,903 yards rushing and 33 touchdowns. His career totals of more than 3,100 yards and 51 scores are milestones that may never be equal. In a symphony of success for St. Ignatius, number 16 created the signature phrasing. And here's exciting new Baraxo waterless hand cleaner. Watch. Meet Tony Antonelli, math teacher, and Dan Corrigan from the history department. Two educators seeking the best out of their students. But put them on a football field along with coach Kevin Cook. They create a defense so diabolical, it puts the opposition into the twilight zone.
used by the Ohio Defensive Player of the Year, number 76 Mike Buzzin, a parade All-American, the Wildcat defense dominated again. Despite eight new starters, it was the same old Cat D, a group that loved contact and wreaking havoc. The opposition scored just nine points a game and averaged only 180 yards of total offense. The Wildcat defenders produced 41 turnovers and 56 quarterback sacks. Many a game plan turned into science fiction against the Wildcat D. Here, take two of these. Ah, new print. Little, yellow, different. This is Jeopardy! Now entering the studio are today's contestants. Welcome to Lakewood Stadium for the annual West Side War. Jim Kanapka, he's in, St. Ed's takes the lead. seconds to play here in the first half. First down, Ignatius at the St. Ed's 14-yard line. Scott Butrin back to pass, rolling to his right. Looking downfield, he's got a man. Darren Kirshner, is he inbounds? Yes, touchdown, Wildcats. Mutrin back to pass to the sidelines. Dave Pajalski, touchdown! Second down, let's call it about eight. Mutrin fakes the handoff to Haddad. Looking down the middle, he has a man out there. Keith Lassinger, forget about it! Touchdown, Ignatius! Presti on a blitz. Adams rolls to his left. He airs it out. He's got a man. Kevin Estrick, touchdown. We're going to overtime. But now comes double jeopardy.
out of the pocket, rolls right, looking for anybody downfield, buying some time, he lets it fly. Keith Lassinger's got a touchdown. The Wildcats go ahead here in OT. Final Jeopardy category, here it is. Rulers. Second down at the 19. Mutrin on the roll to his right. Looking, looking. Now he's going to keep it. Cuts back to his left. He breaks a tackle at the five. He's in. Hang on. There's a flag on the play. They've called clipping on the Wildcats. That'll move the ball back to the 18. Mutrin back to pass. Has time. They've got a screen set up on the left to Schindler. He's inside the 15 and out of bounds. First down now at the 10 yard line. Mutrin rolling to his right. He's under pressure. Nobody open. Down he goes. Second and goal at the 16. Mutrin back to pass. Pumps once. Going for it all. Keith Lassinger. Touchdown. How did he come up with that football? This is for the game. Dan O'Leary to snap it. Nick Paez out of the hole of Brian Stenger. It's good! The Wildcats in triple overtime. Stay unbeaten. of a sixth consecutive trip to the playoffs was another chance to corral the Mustangs of Strongsville. Even though Strongsville would have the first opportunity to score on the night, most of the game the Cats were cutting them off at the pass. The offense got rolling on two Scott Neutron connections to junior wide receiver Darren Kirshner. Eric Haddad did the rest, and Ignatius was on the board. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the Mustangs were being lassoed and hogtied by the blue and gold. The Cats' second touchdown effort was driven by Darren Kirshner. Two counter plays on the ground. And then a slant pass off of a blitz, and it was 14-0 Wildcats. Back at the corral, Kratis, Smith, Lapresti, Angelotti, and Schmatzer got in some Mustang branding. Third quarter and more the same on O. Watch the blocking of Matt Schindler, Mike Buzzard, Ryan Steffen, Marty Curry, Steve Rick, and Eric Golston on this Eric Haddad touchdown run. It was another big night in the playoffs for Eric Haddad. Scott Mutrin made it 28 to nothing with a touchdown toss to Matt Schindler. On an evening of defensive dominance, number 75, Jeff Forgash, capped off the night with this play against his hometown team. I just kept hearing it from the linebacker, screen, screen. Uh, I stopped, put on my wheels, whatever wheels I did have, stopped, and I just saw the ball flow, and I picked it up. And, and it said in the paper 16 yards. It seemed more like me, about two yards. It, I just went by so quick, I didn't even remember 
I didn't even score it. It was just like it's like really slow. Even though I was running slow, but it was just like really slow, and it was it was the greatest feeling I ever had. Wow! What's that aftershave you're wearing? Do high karate aftershave is for the next hour. Sit quietly, and we will control all that you see and hear. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. The playoffs wouldn't seem right without a battle against Euclid. On the Cats' second possession, Scott Neutron goes to Mighty Mike Darren Kirshner to put the offense in business. Scott does the rest on his own for the first score of the night. The defense continues to stymie Euclid's elusive Peppy Pearson. Back on O, a completion to TJ Donovan. A hat ad blast up the middle. And a Mutron strike to Matt Schindler makes it 14 0. On the ground or in the air, the defense never let Peppy Pearson find any kind of room. Second quarter, look out, Euclid. A run to bring the Panthers up close. Then a 47-yard bomb to tight end Matt Schindler. Eric Haddad waltzes in to make it 21-0, Ignatius. Another Panther drive bites the dust. So the offense is ready for more fireworks. 38 yards from Mutrin to Kirshner. After a penalty, a perfect screen pass as Eric Haddad goes untouched for another score. Now for some special teams fun. Number 45, Ryan Lavelle jars the ball loose and Shane McAndrew recovers. Senior Tyler Bardo converts the miscue into another Wildcat touchdown. On the following kickoff, Euclid has trouble again. And it's that guy, number 25, Shane McAndrew with another fumble recovery. Eric Haddad bangs home the score. Six touchdowns on six straight possessions. Euclid would score a touchdown late in the game against the reserves. But the 42-7 final left no doubt who was the dominating force on a chilly night at Byers Field in Parma. We interrupt these Division I playoffs for a lawsuit to determine the teams in the Columbus region. Tune in next week for the state semifinals. In the rain and mud at Canton's Fawcett Stadium, meet the Walsh Warriors on your mark and meet the defending state champs, the St. Ignatius Wildcats, ready for action. Let's start the state semifinals family feud. The Wildcats were ready from the opening kickoff for an emotional showdown with unbeaten Walsh Jesuit. Junior Chuck Delavelle and sophomore Kevin Singleton pop the ball free. And there he is again, Shane McAndrew for the recovery. Eric Haddad goes up and over, and Ignatius takes an early lead. Walsh can't move on its next possession. But the muck in the mire is little problem for Eric Haddad. Nothing Wildcats still in the first quarter. Walsh Jesuit had all sorts of problems with the field conditions. And when quarterback Todd Riddle got a good snap, he had other problems, like junior linebacker Brian Stenger. Behind Ryan Steffen and Eric Goldston, Eric Haddad sloshes downfield on a screen pass. Now it's Marty Cannon, Steve Rick, 
Golston, Ryan Lavelle, and TJ Donovan with the hat at escort. Walsh's offense was highly touted, but Messrs. Buzzin, Kratis, Forgash, and Smith totally shut down Walsh running back Matt Lloyd. Late in the first half, the Warriors made the mistake of again punting the football to Eric Haddad. 77 yards and touchdown number four. For the third straight game in the playoffs, the Wildcat defense overwhelmed the opposition. Todd Riddle had time to throw the ball. There was Brian Stenger again. And even number 99, senior Jim Smith, making like a one-armed bandit with this pickoff, wearing a cast specially designed by trainer Hank Gaughan to protect his fractured left wrist. Eric Haddad culminated a spectacular day with over 300 yards of offense and five touchdowns. A 34 to nothing mud bath. Next stop, the state title game. That's all they're going to give us. we got to pack it away after that. That's it. 48 minutes. That's all. You appreciate, you cherish every ounce of every second of this ball game. You cherish it. Hi, I'm Eric Golston. I'm Tony Antonelli. I'm Michael Presti. I'm Dan Corrigan. I'm Eric Haddad. I'm Chuck Kyle, and this is 48 Minutes. Ignatius won a national championship in 89 with a title win over Moeller. The rematch was on in 93 at Paul Brown Tigers Stadium in Massillon. With snowflakes flying, Scott Mutrin leads the O downfield with two passes to senior tight end Matt Schindler. Two plays later, Darren Kirshner is the target. And with a good block from Keith Lassinger, it's quickly 7-0 Wildcats. But on Moeller's first play from scrimmage, Matt Keller nearly ties the game except for the effort of junior safety Tom Reaney. The defense stiffens. And the Crusaders have to settle for three. Moeller drives on its next possession but a Jim Smith, Pat Kratis quarterback sack kills the drive. Watch the crazy bounce of the football that gives Moeller a great chance to take the lead. But on third and goal, senior cornerback Ray Schmatzer, number 27, forces a fumble and a touchback for Ignatius. Early in the second quarter, shades of the Princeton title game in 88. Senior linebacker Mike Lepresti with a big hit on first and goal. And number 56, Lepresti does it again on the option on second down. It's the entire D rising up on third down to force another field goal. Three molar drives inside the Cats' 10-yard line at just six points to show for it. 
On their next possession, quarterback Scott Mutrin, playing with an injured left shoulder, finds Eric Haddad for a crucial first down. A Haddad draw play adds 13 more. Then it's a favorite play, the screen pass. The Cats are taking command. The defense forces a three and out. With good field position, Scott Mutrin again hooks up with Eric Haddad. Two plays later, Scott spots a seam and scrambles 14 yards for a 21-6 advantage. Moeller's last-minute threat of the first half is stopped on a bone-jarring sack by Mike Buzzin and Pat Kratis. The Wildcats rallied from two touchdowns down in 89, so on the second half kickoff, Mitch Ocampo, Chuck Delavella, Jim Conrad, and Shane McAndrew made sure Moeller didn't get the same idea. On second down, quarterback Mike Green is flushed from the pocket, and his deflected pass is picked off by safety Tom Reaney. That leads to a Nick Piaz field goal and a 24-6 lead. The Moeller offense continues to go nowhere. But not the Wildcats. Eric Haddad, 53 yards for his 33rd touchdown of the year. Muller would eventually score a pair of touchdowns in the game, but big plays like these from number 27 Ray Schmotzer and his defensive teammates left little doubt who was number one. With the snow again falling, the offense went back to its early game plan. Matt Schindler down the middle, and Darren Kirshner up the sidelines for another Wildcat score. It was one for the thumb, a fifth state title for St. Ignatius. The pressure that was placed on them at the beginning of the year. No St. Ignatius football coach has ever asked a football team to do what I had to ask them. And that was, you're ranked number one in the nation in USA Today. Uh, it, yes, there's gonna be pressure with this. Yes, everybody's gonna be shooting at us. We're gonna live with it. And we're gonna try to win every one of our football games, one at a time. After the Youngstown game, I had to realize that, you know, it was time to just take a step back Maybe that thumb injury wasn't the worst thing that happened and just uh, reflect over the first five games and see where I was heading and it wasn't in the right direction. I think uh, I just had to really calm myself down and just take it one step at a time. I think as the test got greater, um, they brought themselves up and obviously one of the greatest tests they had this year was the St. Ed's game. We were put in a situation where it's either we make this play or we lose and we passed that test and that was needed. No championship team can go through you without something like that. They have to have that or they'll, they'll never know they have that gear inside them. After we played Euclid and we just, you know, dominated that entire game, I think that's when it totally convinced me that, you know, we weren't going to be stopped. Uh, there weren't too many other teams in the state, let alone the nation, that you know, were playing as well as us when we were supposed to be during the playoffs. And I think that's when we hit our stride. It was really satisfying to see what happened when, when everything was over in the end, that the kids came through, in particular the seniors, because you're always pulling for the seniors, you know, and you hope that they do do the job. I, I think winning the national championship and playing against Moeller and having their tradition versus our tradition, and just the whole, the state game was probably my most memorable game because we won the national title and the state title all in one game. And...
It was their time to be in the spotlight, and uh, they worked so hard to, to achieve success. They, they, they worked so hard to, if this is going to be my time, I want to do it right. I think a lot of it is what uh, Coach Kyle talks about, just that uh, what this place is all about academically and, uh, and as well as athletically, that you're just demanding the best of yourself, and you can't settle for mediocrity. And uh, I, I think it's the challenge. And it's not a, a nervous challenge like I, I got to measure up. I think it's just that they want to measure up. How is it done? It's done because they, they want it. They just want to do it. It's, it's now a situation where that's the goal, the only goal. The ability to reach a goal, to be the best, takes talented people committed to doing the work necessary to achieve it. But it also takes a special bond, a sharing that makes it worthwhile long after the cheering fades. Just, just being out there playing with, with those fellows, winning the national championship, is just something no one can ever take away from us. So the guys on the team, I mean, they're a great bunch of guys, and, and I enjoy playing with Sky and Eric and Mike and Jeff and all the other guys, I and mean, even the sophomores and juniors that even helped us at practice. I mean, great bunch of kids, and it's just this whole school, it's just a great bunch of people. It's just the closeness that we have and the, the togetherness that this team brought together every time they took the field. It was more than just playing football. It was a family and a love for one another and to do the best that we could. No, I'm not Russell Baker or even Alistair Cook, but wouldn't it be great to talk like they do? A masterpiece, a classic, whether it be in the literature, uh, I knew I'd screw one up. Three, two, one, Mike Muzzin. I'm Mike Muzzin. I'm Mike. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's a tough question. Um, matter of fact, I'm not even going to comment on it. Okay. Three, two, one, I'm Scott Muchard. <laughs> Okay. I'll try not to laugh. Okay. Every year when I look at that highlight film and it's that one chin, it's like, whoosh. I'm Ryan Stafford. I'm Michael Presti. I'm Chuck Kyle. I'm Mike Buzzin. Okay. Try to do it without laughing now. Again? Yeah, one more time. Try and do it without an outright guffaw. Okay. Ready?